Good evening. Welcome to Northeast Web Shorts. You are watching Daily Evening News Bulletin with me, Shushila Chetri, starting off with the national news. Over 72 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses administered so far, recovery rate stands at 97.5%. The Central Board of Direct Taxation CBTT extended the income tax return filing deadline FY 2020 to 21 for individuals till 31st December 2021, mostly for the difficulties faced by taxpayers in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. The government's think tanks Niti Aayog's Atal Innovation Mission and Atal Tinkering Labs have joined hands with the Indian Space Resource Organization ISRO and the Central Board of Secondary Education CBSC to launch the ATL Space Challenge 2021 for young students during Cold War Space Week from October 4 to 10. Home Minister Amit Shah held a meeting in New Delhi to review the security and development issues of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha and Army Chief General Manoj Mukund Naravne were present at the meeting among others. Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh said the center will conduct common eligibility tests in 2022 with a view to bring entrance exam examinations to the doorstep of the candidates. He said CET will be conducted for the post of Staff Selection Commission, Banking and Railways initially in all districts of the country. Over 27 lakh unorganized workers have been registered on eShram portal since its launch. eShram portal was launched last month which maintains a database of unorganized workers and facilitates better implementation of various social security schemes for their welfare. Agriculture Minister N. S. Thomas hold interactions with farmers, horticulturists, agriculture scientists and other stakeholders to get first-hand appraisals of numerous welfare schemes and policies being taken in the region. Telangana Governor Dr. Tamil Sai Sondarajan flagged off Central Reserve Police Force CRPFS Kanya Kumari to Raj Ghat cycle rally at People's Plaza Hyderabad on 9 September, promoting spirit of patriotism as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrations. The construction of the Ram Temple structure in Ayodhya will be done using pink stone sourced from Rajasthan and the temple campus will include a museum, research center, gaushala and a yagya sala sources in the temple trust said. The union government has placed a purchase order with the Serum Institute of India for 66 crore doses of Covisil to be supplied by December. The Allahabad High Court on 9 September stayed a Varanasi court order for an archaeological survey of the Kaspi Viswanath Temple Gyanvapi Mosque complex for determining if any temple ever existed in the place of the mosque. The President of India Ramnath Kovind appointed new governors of Tamil Nadu, Uttarakhand and Nagaland. As per the official release, the President of India has appointed Lieutenant General Gurmit Singh, PVSM, UYSM, AVSM, VSM, SM retired as Governor of Uttarakhand. Former Nagaland Governor R. N. Ravi as the Governor of Tamil Nadu, Anwari Lal Purohit, Governor of Tamil Nadu, who was holding additional charge of the Governor of Punjab, is appointed as regular Governor of Punjab. Officer Jagdish Mukhi, Governor of Assam, is appointed to discharge the functions of the Governor of Nagaland in addition to his own duties until regular arrangements are made. Lieutenant General retired Gurmit Singh, new Uttarakhand Governor. RN Ravi has been moved to Tamil Nadu. Banwari Lal Purohit, Governor of Punjab. Assam Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi has been given additional charge of Nagaland. Haryana Home Minister Anil Viz on 9 September said the government is ready for a probe into the entire Karnal episode including an IAS officer's controversial remarks and a police lathi charge on farmers that has triggered a sit-in outside the district headquarters. Bollywood star Akshay Kumar turned 54 on 9 September and wishes to keep pouring on social media extending their greetings towards the Khilari. Apart from the fans, many other celebrities also led the wishes on social media. Moving further to international news. The 13th BRICS summit, uh, summit in virtual format on 9 September 2021 evening. PM Modi chairs BRICS summit says BRICS an influential voice for emerging economies of world. The 2021 BRICS summit is the 13th annual BRICS summit 
an international relations conference attended by the heads of state or heads of government of the five member states Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. It will be the third time that India hosted the BRICS summit after 2012 and 2016. The theme for the summit is BRICS at the rate 15, intra-BRICS cooperation for continuity, consolidation and consensus. BRICS is an acronym for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. India's National Security Advisor Azit Dobal, President of the New Development Bank, Marcos Trizo, the Pro Tempor Chair of the BRICS Business Council, Onkar Kanwar and Pro Tempor Chair of the BRICS Women's Business Alliance, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy presented reports on the outcome pursued this year. India-Denmark jointly launched Center of Excellence on Offshore Wind as part of the Green Strategic Partnership. Union Minister for Power and New and, Re and Renewable Energy R.K. Singh met Denmark's Minister for Climate, Energy and Utilities Dan Jorgensen in New Delhi. Former Mauritius Prime Minister Navin Ram Gulam has been moved to India for treatment after he, after he tested positive for COVID-19. About 30 airports have been either built or under construction in Tibet and Xinjiang provinces which will boost China's civil and military infrastructure in the remote regions bordering India. Moving further to world news. The Bangladesh government aims to make the land management system of the country fully digitized and bring land services to the doorstep of people, teen dead in fire at makeshift COVID hospital in North Macedonia. The first in-person summit of the leaders of the Quad countries is likely to take place in Washington on September 24 with a focus to chart a new roadmap for expanding the overall cooperation in diverse areas. Two journalists were detained and severely beaten by Taliban security forces Taki Daryabi and Nemat Nagdi from the Kabul-based Media outlet Etilat A. Rose were, con were covering protests by women in the Afghan capital calling for an end to Taliban violations of the rights of women and girls, Human Rights Watch said. Moving on to sports news. North Korea is banned from participating in the Winter Olympics in Beijing next year as punishment for skipping the summer's Tokyo Games. International Olympic Committee President Thomas Butch announced that North Korea's National Olympic Committee is suspended until the end of 2022. The Beijing Olympics are scheduled for February 4 to 20. Union Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports Anurag Singh Thakur felicitated India's para-athletes who won a historic 19 medals including 5 gold and 8 silver in the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. England Cricket Board have announced their 15-man squad for the T20 World Cup 2021, which is all set to commence from October 17 in the UAE. Three-time Paralympic medal-winning javelin thrower Devendra Jhajaria, former cricketer Venkatesh Prasad and ex-world champion boxer El Sarita Devi have been named in the selection committee for this year's National Sports Awards. Supreme Court Judge Justice Mukundakum Sarma has been picked as the chairperson of the committee, which also includes decorated former shooter Anjali Bhagwat and former women's cricket team captain Anjum Chopra, the sports ministry stated in a circular. Taliban bans sports for all Afghanistan women, says it exposes their body. In November 2020, 25 female cricketers were awarded central contracts by the Afghanistan Cricket Board ACB, but now it is prohibited. Coming towards the end with COVID update national. Indian Friday reported 34,973 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. With this, the country's coronavirus tally has jumped to 33,174,954, according to the Union Health Ministry's update data at 9 a.m. Of the new infections reported in last 24 hours, Kerala contributed a record 26,200 cases. In the last 24 hours, the virus claimed the lives of 260 more people, pushing the death toll to 4,42,009. So this is it for today. For more updates, keep watching Northeast Web Shorts. Thank you.